are live from Barcelona in Park Güell. I clearly like to do videos in parks. Um, we're having a wonderful day. We just had a picnic of bocadillos and some truffle flavored uh, gourmet potato chips. So delicious. I don't know if you can hear the castanets and the live music, but this is a wonderful day and we just wanted to talk about our impression of traveling and working and Barcelona in general. So, honey? Well, first of all, it's amazing. <laughs> so that's uh, that's my first impression, but um, yeah, I've just really had a, a wonderful time here. Um, I think, you know, aside from like the obvious things like the, you know, the food and the, the architecture and the history, um, for me, the the most the, the thing that really gets me excited the most is, is honestly the lifestyle. Um, you know, you've probably heard of the siestas in the mid afternoon uh, from two to five, which are a real thing here. I mean, people really shut down their businesses from two to five, which is kind of cool. And it. Works. And I've always loved naps, so I love that. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know if people actually go and they, they take a nap or if they just go home to rest and, and do something, but for me, it's um, it works out great for our businesses because we're able to work during that time and then we get done late. Uh, we're in the States, you know, it'd be almost time to go to bed by the time we're done coaching, but here it's like, it's it's time for a, a dinner. So it's it just works out really well and it's a, it's a fun switch up to our normal routines. Here, I'll hold this. And I, I also feel that people, I mean, not that we don't do it in the States, but people really take every moment of the day. Like, I feel like I'm more present here, perhaps because I'm on a different schedule than I was in, in America. So I have, you know, I wake up in the morning, I check my emails, and then I have the full day to do whatever we, we choose to do. And then um, I go back to work around 3 p.m. and I do about six hours. And I feel like I have a, I had a full day of work and I did some coaching, but then, uh, we get to go out to dinner and we get to like either we cook or we find some, a place that we want to go eat and every single night we've gone for a walk. I think every day I've walked at least 10 miles. It's been amazing and um, I, I don't know but it could also be that um, I have wanderlust and when I'm away I am happier I think. Yeah absolutely and you know there's we're, we're in a new location so there's always something new to see and for two people who love variety um, you know, a, a nightly walk can really bring a lot of satisfaction because there's something new to see and, and check out. And, um, it's just awesome. So, yeah. yeah. So, what would your favorite thing be about Barcelona, if you had to well, choose one or two? Well, that was my favorite thing was was just the change in lifestyle. But if I was gonna like think of, I don't know, maybe what we've done or what we've saw, um, definitely La, La Sagrada Familia. I mean, that was. The most impressive piece of architecture I've ever seen. Uh, if you, you know, if you if you don't know about it, you can look into it. Um, but you know, I guess the better option would be to just come see it because, you know, it's a 200-year-old project that uh, the famous architect from Spain here, uh, Gaudi, has, you know, uh, spearheaded. And, and you know, obviously he's dead now, but. They're still working on it, and it's just this this amazing piece of architecture that, you know, tributes Catholicism, but also nature. And I don't know, what, what would you add to that? Yeah, I mean, every single thing in the cathedral had a symbol, and I'm big on symbolism. So it was just, you know, I, I had been there five years ago, and just to see how much they had completed in the last five years is amazing. Um, so I liked that, you know. Ev the, tree, the, the pillars inside are supposed to be like trees and it's like the trees holding up or like going up to heaven and that was really special to me. I'm, I'm really into nature clearly <laughs> um, but I, I feel like there's definitely something sacred in cathedrals. I, I'm not Catholic by faith but every time I come to Europe I try and go into cathedrals and pray and I remember I, I posted about this yesterday, but five years ago I prayed for love and it was just overwhelmingly emotional for me yesterday to be there with Nate and being able to reach over. Tears. Yeah, tears screaming. streaming down my face. Um, and to hold his hand and just like know that. Um, I'm very choked up now just talking about it, but that um, my prayers were answered and that my dream had come true. And um, 
Yeah, I would say that was my favorite. Yeah, definitely. That was a really cool experience. Um, but, you know, our trip has not come without its challenges for sure. And I mean, the second day here, we had a little, a little argument or mix up, whatever you want to call it, that honestly lasted almost the whole day. Um, <clears throat> You know, and I, I was having trouble on it, even remembering what it was totally about, but um, I think the main point for me, the lesson, the takeaway was that, you know, with travel comes a lot of uncertainty and just new things happen and unexpected things happen and you, know, you can't necessarily predict it. And so to have an expectation that it's all going to be, you know, gravy is, I think, a little unrealistic. And so for me, you know, preparing to travel you've got to almost expect that and just not be so short with things not going your way and just um, really be prepared to emotionally say you know not everything's gonna work out perfect we're not gonna agree on everything and just be okay with that you know and, and maybe even have a conversation if you're traveling with your partner to uh, to just say let's let's make a intention to just you know be in love because we know we're not gonna agree on everything and and um, I think that would have been something in hindsight uh, a lot more beneficial. Yeah, and I'm really happy that we got it out day two than, you know, day 15. I'm sure something else will come up because, you know, we're a couple <laughs> and um, we both have our own sets of expectations. But for and me, we're both stubborn, we're very stubborn. Um, but for me, I think it's like letting go of expectation. You know, uh, our disagreement was, you know, I, I thought I was helping and he saw it as me trying to control which I absolutely try and do sometimes, but it was just a miscommunication and being able to, you know, it's it's a pressure cooker when you're when you're traveling as a couple and you're the only people that you know and so I had to rely on myself. Like I didn't you know, I couldn't call call my girlfriends and be like, What you know, this is what happened. I had to like journal and, and meditate and really come down on my own, which is really a good lesson for me. Um, because nothing is really that big of a deal and I think that that episode really taught me that it's just like let go of your expectations you know go, come back together in love and explain where you're coming from and know that misunderstandings are going to happen and as long as we can keep that in the front of our minds I think we will be able to get through this trip um, swimmingly but so far I mean it's just been amazing yeah other than that it's been a phenomenal experience I mean I feel like I could live here oh yeah and I mean, I just, it's, it's been so romantic and so, you know, it just kind of like reignites your love for one another because it's just such a cool experience. And you to have share, to rely so. on each other. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's the thing, like you either rely on each other or you go your separate ways and we definitely don't want to do that. So just learning to, we're very independent people. So learning how to like rely on each other and for instance, navigation, like, you know, we, the two of us together, we're getting anywhere we can um, easily because with our brains together, we know that like if I don't know where we're at, he can figure it Half out. Half a brain. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I feel like even with the language, we're we're translating together, we're we're speaking like together, we're figuring it out. Um, they don't speak they speak Catalan here. They don't speak uh, Castellano Spanish, so it's a little different. And we're on our way to San Sebastian tomorrow, which is Basque, which is a little bit of French and Spanish. So just knowing that we have this, um, this ability to figure everything out together is uh, definitely a strengthener. And um, it's, a good, it's a good thing to start year two in marriage with. Definitely. Do you have anything else you want to add? We have, a one, we have one minute left, so. Um, yeah, Instagram only wants us to do 10 minutes. I mean, I could talk forever. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just excited to be here. I mean, hopefully uh, anyone watching is, you know, excited for us and just learning some lessons. And we really and just really want to inspire you to just follow your dreams, whatever it is. You don't have to be traveling around the world, but it's possible to make anything happen. And yesterday at Sagrada Familia, like I said, it was overwhelming just knowing that, you know, I have the power in my brain and my energy to bring whatever I want into my life. And so do you. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, manifestation works wherever you are in the world. And we've even seen that here. I, I mean, we've had a few examples of just like thinking about things and then they just appear. So it's really, really awesome. Set your intentions, set your dreams, and uh, you can make this happen for yourself. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in San Sebastian.